In this lesson, we'll discuss different operations that are generally used on a day-to-day -day basis. For instance, how to load the material, how to move the tool head, how to stop the cutter, and we'll cover some helpful functions that make the operation a little easier. Although loading material on the flatbed is a fairly simple task, there are times that the Y bar will be in the way. As a general rule, moving it by hand when it is turned off is best done very slowly. When the cutter is turned on, moving it by the arrow keys is slow and tedious. The stop and view button can help in this. When the cutting plotter is in ready mode, pressing stop will send the tool to the upper right corner so that it is completely out of the way and materials can be loaded easily. When loading material onto a bed with an adhesive mat or sheet, it should be smoothed down to ensure adherence. If you're using the electrostatic bed on the FC4500-50 cutting plotter, then press the chart hold button after the material has been loaded. As a suggestion, always load the material in the lower left corner near the control panel. This may save you the unnecessary step of moving the tool to where the material starts in the middle of the table. Once the material is loaded, you can then return the Y bar to its original location by pressing stop again. As the table is used more and more, especially with the adhesive mat and sheets, the surface accumulates excess dust. When this happens, it may lose some of its adhesiveness. There are a couple of steps that can prevent this. After you're done using the cutter each day, replace the plastic cover sheet that originally came with the adhesive mats and sheets. If the material doesn't adhere as well as necessary, tape can be used in a pinch to hold down the four corners. When this happens, it may also be an indication that the bed is dusty and should be wiped down. First, turn the cutting plotter off. Unplug it. Take a damp cloth and wipe the surface down. This should restore the adhesive's tackiness. Using the arrow keys to move the tool is very simple as well. To move the tool to the right, press and hold the right arrow button. Press the down arrow button to move the tool head in a downward direction toward the bottom of the table. Press the up arrow button to move the tool head upward towards the top of the table. To move to the left, press and hold the left arrow button. Pressing two adjacent arrow keys at once will move the tool in a diagonal direction. For instance, pressing the right arrow button and the up arrow button at the same time will move the tool head diagonally. It's similar when pressing the left arrow button and the down arrow button simultaneously. The cutting plotter will move diagonally in the opposite direction. You've probably noticed by now that the head goes very slowly. To make the head go faster, simply hold down one of the arrow keys and press next simultaneously and this will speed up the movement. The origin, once pressed, will set a new start point or origin. This means that everything to be plotted will plot upward and to the left of that point. Therefore, it is a good habit to always press the origin prior to cutting a job. This will prevent mishaps when the cutting plotter starts in a different spot than you intended or starts cutting in the wrong area. When the cutting plotter is in operation, there are two methods to stop it, the pause button and the stop button. Pause, once pressed, will pause the cutting or plotting operation. Once pressed, it will continue to plot or cut until it reaches a good stopping point. This is best used if a setting needs to be adjusted, but the operation doesn't necessarily need to be stopped altogether. On the other hand, if you really need to stop the cutting plotter in its tracks, so to speak, pressing stop cancels the operation altogether. Once stop is pressed, two options are presented to either continue or quit. Pressing F2 for continue will resume the operation. Pressing F4 will quit the operation. Once pressed, another message will ask whether to clear the buffer or cancel. Here again, the cutter gives a choice to make sure you want to stop. Then to stop altogether, choose clear buffer. The next option is the copy option. 
generally it is recommended that using your software application is best for making copies. This is especially true when making matrix copies. The reason for this is that the software will give us a visual of how the copies are laid out. There are times though when the copy function on the control panel can be useful. Let's say you needed to make copies, but you only have pieces or scraps of material, each large enough for only one copy. Since this would be harder to take care of in the software, it's best then to use the copy function. How this works is to load the first piece, and then send to design. Once the design has been cut, replace the cut piece with a new piece. Move the tool carriage to the desired point, and then press copy. Here the count can be left to 1 and then press enter and it will cut the second copy.